Hey everybody, it's Norm from Test It. And it's Jeremy from Test It. Welcome to Projections, our show about virtual reality and augmented reality. Now, the type of AR and VR that we typically cover and that we enjoy, mm -hmm. is it's in the high end right now. It's not exactly mainstream. That's right, we have VR headsets. They go for about $600 now. Yep, or yep. even 400. That's right. With a special price point. Uh, but we wanna see these devices, what happens when, if OEMs, can, hardware manufacturers can make a version of them that can reach more mainstream. What does that look like? Is the experience gonna be good enough? And, and what does that cost? And what does it cost? And we may be seeing the first example of that with a new product that was announced this week from Lenovo in partnership with Disney. Mm -hmm. Now back in D23, uh, the Disney Expo Fan Expo back in July, uh, they cryptically revealed a photo and a YouTube video showing some type of partnership. They called it an AR, AR glasses. Mm -hmm. It's very what, sexy. It was somebody just holding a, what looked like a lightsaber wearing mm -hmm. a, a AR headset. Right, and so a lot of speculation as to whether this was gonna be some a new piece of hardware that would just run some Star Wars software, yeah. what that lightsaber meant, and now we have most of the details. Well, we've used it. We've used it, yes. So this is called the Star Wars Jedi Challenge, and Lenovo is the hardware maker here. They make this headset. They call it the Lenovo a Mirage AR headset. Right, no, okay, so, so slow down. If you call it a headset, I think it has a display in it. That's right. You think, I mean, headset can mean all sorts of things. Right. It is actually more akin to your mobile VR uh, device. Right, so you like put your phone. Daydream or a Gear VR. Exactly. But it's more than that. And it, we should say right up front, it costs $200. Yes. Right? So you take your phone and you put it into the, this headset. And by the way, it can use either iPhone or Android phones. Whoa, because I, iPhone and Android, different sizes, that's a technical challenge. iPhones are different sizes. Right, that's right. So you open it up and they have this bracketing system and an adapter system. Right. But like like the actual, the, the high-end AR headsets that we've used before, um, for example, like the Meta, mm -hmm. uh, it is a screen that's, you place the phone above your eye, almost like in the visor mm -hmm. position. And then using mirrors, it, projects it or reflects it onto a translucent display in front of you. Right, so you can see through it uh, you know, into the real world. And what they're doing is taking the resolution of your screen, so whether that's a 1080p iPhone or a high resolution you know, 2.5K Android phone, mm -hmm. and splitting that in half, and then so you do see like some type of stereo image in your field of view. Right, and no matter what phone you have, they're trying to give you the same experience. Yeah. So what that means is if you have a bigger screen, they actually crop it. Right. So the, right. the bracket that it goes into only uses a subset of the pixels on, say, a plus iPhone, mm -hmm. and the, like the full screen on a lower size um, iPhone. Right, so the headset itself, uh, it's translucent display that goes all around, but the image is only gonna be right in front of you. Right, I, I was actually pretty impressed by the width of the image. I mean, compared to, we, AR is still, as we've said before, very early days. Uh, so a lot of the AR that we've seen have been pretty small. I mean, nothing mm -hmm. compared to the field of view of VR. So this compared to what we've seen so far, I was actually fairly impressed. Like, it actually goes out fairly far. I was a little more concerned about the vertical restriction. Mm. Right, because the vertical is like the width of the phone, and these phones are all now 16 by nine, right. so you get more horizontal. It's bigger than that the postage stamp size that you typically describe exactly. as for the HoloLens, uh, but it's a different type of display system. Yeah. It's not using something that's pumping light directly into your retinas, it's not a projection-based system. So the image quality, because it's reflecting off of your screen, it's gonna be dependent on how bright your screen is. Yeah, and I, d I did ask about that. I, I think that the OLED panels are gonna give you a slightly better contrast for obvious reasons, because the blacks yeah. are just off, right. so it's pure pass-through, and the, what, whatever pixels are lit, are light sources, so that's that's kind of the ideal scenario. Of course, they were very cautious to say every every phone will have you know a similar experience, and they're happy with where they've landed. I think we're getting a little ahead of ourselves, though. We should explain what the experience is that you get from the actual device. Yes, so it's called Jedi Challenges, and that's because it is a Star Wars themed game. And in addition to the headset and the display, you have 
peripherals, two of them actually. Mm -hmm. There is this lightsaber, this modeled lightsaber with a, it looks like a chopped off blue tip. Right. Uh, and then also this puck, this, uh, this, this beacon that you place somewhere in the room. On the floor. On the floor. And that's because there is positional tracking. Right. There are two cameras that are part of this headset that then detect the IR light coming from that puck and also from the lightsaber. Mm -hmm. Now with those, that triangulation, your position, the lightsaber's position, and that puck, they can put objects in your field of view in the real world. So the game that we got to try was a Star Wars style lightsaber duel. You put the puck on the ground and that provides a sense of where that plane is. So they can put your opponent, your VR virtual augmented uh, opponent into the space with you, standing on the same plane as you are. So then you see them across the room and they advance towards you. In this case, it was Kylo Ren. Your lightsaber that you're holding uh, looks like, you know, basically Luke, Sky, uh, Luke Skywalker's lightsaber, yep. but in AR, the, the lightsaber extends out of the tip of it. So alignment. Exactly. Right? You're holding yeah. a real world object. This is what AR is all about. You're holding a real world object. Yes, the blue light comes out from the lightsaber, but they don't render the hilt. They only render the blade. Exactly. So the refresh rate of your phone, it's, you're gonna be at 60 hertz. Right. Most. If you're moving your hilt really, really fast, it's not gonna catch up as much. But if you, even if you're holding it still and doing your moving your slow mm -hmm. movement, how did you feel that alignment worked for you? It was pretty, it was pretty good. Like I was impressed. So the, the actual lightsaber has that IR tip on the end of it. It also has an, its own built-in accelerometer. Mm -hmm. So that's communicating with uh, the headset or the phone in order to communicate you know, angle. And it gets positioned based on that IR tip in, at the end. So they have enough information to do it right. It's just a matter of the processing power. This is a, a question like will different phones provide the same experience or not because there's so many variables. Right, right. And then even in that gameplay, you know, when you when they're telling us about this before we tried it on, mm -hmm. we're imagining, okay, if the alignment's perfect, if the refresh rate is good enough, you know, I want to have a full-on lightsaber battle with a virtual Kylo Ren, mm -hmm. you're not having a real battle. It's a it's a very simplistic game. It's a game. It's absolutely a video game. And they give you what they call like force premonitions where they will show you a ghost of where you should put your lightsaber in order to defend yourself. And it's kind of interesting because it's not a 2D game, right? It's VR or AR, it's in 3D. So you have to position not just this way, not just this way, but sort of six degrees and you have to place it in the right angle just in time for Kylo to come in for his attack. You yeah. block him and then you can get him back or stun him. And essentially it's a, a game of defend and attack. It's the AR equivalent of a quick time event. You know, I the mush and so. mashing quick time right. event on your traditional, you know, flat screen shooter, except now you're actually moving your hand. It's a little bit more than a quick time, because that's sort of like, press X. Well, I, it's positioning. I think of it hand. as like uh, Prince of Persia. You remember like the, the sword dueling in that okay. game? It was like, it was very refined. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a definitely like a fun mechanic there. And if they amp up the, the skill, it seems like it could actually be a pretty decent challenge. They said that Darth Vader would be too much for me to handle. Now, at this point, when but I they, tried they do it, have him later in the right, game that right. you can play. It. When I tried it, the thing I was looking for in terms of the alignment with the world. Now you're yeah. not going to get it's not light field. You know you're not refocusing your eyes to foreground and background. It's all focused to infinity. Like alignment to lightsaber is one thing, mm -hmm. but how well does that floating Kylo Ren fit into? the world, you're the room that you're in. Well, it's not aware of anything in the it's world. It's not. Right? All it knows is where that ground puck is, and so yeah. it knows where the ground is. So he's, if you don't have an open space, Kylo's gonna walk through your couch, and you know he looks like a ghost in AR, he might as well walk through your couch. And it's, he's gonna be oriented always in front of you. It's not like if he's standing there, the virtual version, and you look this way, and then you hear the sound, and you turn back to him, uh -huh. it's always gonna be kind of in your field of view. Right. Yeah, and then kind of floating toward you. I was impressed though, given that it really, that puck is really its best, you know, indication of where the, where the ground is. I was impressed by how much I could turn around and they, they would maintain position. So like, it, it seems to do a good job of not breaking that illusion. You don't have to constantly face the same direction. Right, because they have that three degrees IMU yeah. of detection. So even if you turn around, it knows you've rotated mm -hmm. at least. And then there are other games that come right. with us. So we didn't get a chance to play anything but the lightsaber duel, but the two other game modes that they promised were coming at launch are an RTS game that you play on the ground with little uh, vehicles from, you know, obviously uh, ad ads and various Star Wars vehicles. Uh, you play against the AI opponent. I'm not sure how the controls would that work. I mean, and how do you select your, your units and how do you do everything, I imagine, with the lightsaber? It's right. an interesting question. Um, so I'd be curious to see what that is. They seem to really like that game. They're very proud of it. 
Um, the other game is Hollow Chess. Mm. And they are calling it Hollow Chess, by the way. It's not, not a Jarek. No, and they made a point of that because that, that rule set does exist. Huh, and this isn't that. This is not that. They said the, the official rule set is a bit too complicated. <laughs> okay. And so they wanted to make it a little more accessible. And so they have created their own rules. And this will be uh, their version of Hollow Chess. And now, both that kind of wave based RTS or strategy game mm -hmm. and the Hollow Chess game are going to require good alignment to the ground. Mm -hmm. to have characters and virtual objects come in the ground. And the best sense that we got of that was the menu system, I think, in the, the Jedi uh, challenges, the mm -hmm. lightsaber combat game. Because even before you get into fighting Kylo Ren or Darth Vader, they do have like a tier, like a, a virtual menu system that floats around that beacon. And you look at the planet you want to teleport to. And that was pretty good. Yeah, so I, I was pretty impressed. I think Lenovo obviously had having developed a, a Google Tango based mm -hmm. uh, phone. They they have the software engineers to work on AR and to make AR work with that type of depth setting data. And we know that AR based beacons, whether it's a movable beacon in your lightsaber or the beacon in the floor, uh, are good enough to give you position information. Yeah, I'm excited about what they hinted would be coming. And they strongly suggested that multiplayer is something that won't be available at launch, but that multiplayer dueling was something they really strongly intend to bring to the platform. So you and me both potentially wearing these headsets, exactly. holding our lightsabers, and seeing the virtual blades. Right. But how would that even work combat-wise? Like We're not going to actually... It do I don't know. Like It doesn't know necessarily where I am or where mm -hmm. you are. Yeah. So is it... <laughs> I don't know. They also uh, wanted to bring a, the Luke Skywalker training droid. That makes the most sense to I me. thought, well, that's how you train for in the game. I mean, yeah. maybe that'll be there at launch, but they said, no, 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 we can't talk about that yet, but that's something that oh, uh, you the, know we very much are working on. The headset itself kind of looks like the training headset. With the blast shield down, I can't even see. How am I supposed to fight? <laughs> that's the game. That, that, that alone would be worth yeah. the price of admission. So it is interesting. It is a mainstream. For, this will be in, in stores and on their website. So it is a mainstream mm -hmm. attempt at getting AR. Uh, into the mass market. And that's interesting. Like we really haven't seen any AR devices at all. So I mean, this is going to be like the first like big leap into that space. And AR meaning interaction with the real world, not just holding a phone out in front of you. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It, by the way, the lightsaber has a button on it. I didn't get to use, mm. but it, there's a power button as well as a force power button. Yeah. So when you're lightsaber dueling, you'll be able to push your enemies back and things like that. Yeah. It's interesting. They also can change the uh, color of the lightsaber. Mm. That's not something available at lunch, but maybe with that multiplayer thing you can have a red lightsaber. And my, what I would hope is that Lenovo and potentially Disney and Star Wars uses this and thinks of it as a platform and mm -hmm. not just sell you this $200 kit yeah. to, to play the three mini games mm -hmm. with you know, DLC in the future, but think of other interesting ways as you have more people using this, you know, to do something a year later, two years later, um, maybe even as phones get better, um, yeah. to take advantage of those sensors as well. Yeah, and me too. I mean, I, it'll be interesting to see you know, what the market for this is. I mean, $200 is kind of a good deal in the VR space. Uh, we don't have much to compare it to in AR, and it is such a unique experience. It'll be interesting to me to see, you know, whether or not this finds a place in the, in the market or not. I, I do think the lightsaber is pretty cool. I think Star Wars fans will probably dig this just because the quality of the lightsabers is pretty decent. All right, so that's Star Wars Jedi Challenges. It's going to be out for this holiday season, I think, in November, and we'll definitely be trying it out in the office when we get it then. So, Jeremy, before we go, I do want to ask you something yeah. not AR or VR related. Oh, yes. Um, hijacked conversation a little bit because uh, you saw some other Star Wars related uh, toys, robots at this event. There were a few other toys there, but the one that really caught my attention was the new stuff from Sphero. Okay. And we know them, they, they made the BB 8 toy yep. uh, that you guys disassembled. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which it was, was no it was small amazing, trick. Amazing, amazing toy. And I think yeah. they've, uh, they've done other robotics. They did a Cars toy earlier. They did this year. a Lightning McQueen, $300. And yeah. He, that was interesting. He actually told me some uh, backstory on that. They actually developed a Maya to robotic tool so that they have actual animators able to make whatever Maya animations they want, as they would for a movie, convert that into servos and everything that works in their own toys, which That's is pretty cool. So they, actually, like, they said they had John Lasseter like, consulting on the animation, huh. which is pretty cool. Anyway, so this is a, this is a company of, of geeks that love robotics, and th their new stuff coming out is certainly in the same vein. So I was excited by these things. One is an R2 unit, okay. which is about that tall. All I right, think about it's about six, seven inches tall. I think he's gonna sell for, I think they said about 170. Okay. Um, and 
It's R two D two. I mean, it's a he, robot R two D two. He stands up on his own. He can he can spin around. But then when you want to go forward, he has a third wheel that kicks out of the bottom. You can't even see it. It's totally, it drops out. It's totally enclosed. It drops out, and then he leans back as he does in the movie, and he scoots around. His head spins. There's multicolor LEDs in his head, and he makes all the sounds. And and he again like they really nailed the animations. Even with R2, he has a mode where he gets hit by the Jawa gun, mm -hmm. and he, he spins around and makes all the sounds, and, he, and then he flops over backwards. Whoa, and it's all phone controlled. It's all phone controlled, um, so yeah, it, and it's, it's very, very cool. The other robot that I saw there was the a reveal. Oh, wait, hold on. So uh, if you're watching this video and you don't want any Last Jedi spoilers, you might want to see you next time. See you next time. <laughs> but I do want to hear some Last Jedi spoilers. Lay it on me. I was kind of surprised. Like, there, there was a droid from The Last Jedi called BB 9E. What? Yes. So, like, wait, maybe wait, he's like, a like new model. For whatever reason, there's a new model called BB 9E, and he is definitely an Imperial. At least that's what it looks like to me. He is black with black with white stripes, looks evil as can be. But a ball. But a ball, he performs just like BB-8, except from the robotics geeky side, they managed to put LEDs in the head now. Okay. And the, the power for that is transferred um, totally inductive. Oh, from, from, so it's still two separate units. Yeah. A magnetic connection, mm -hmm. and then the head can move around. And that's and the lights. neat part. Like I can understand inductive charging and power transfer from a static, you know, stationary device from mm -hmm. one thing to another. But this head, it moves all over this ball. Oh my god. So that's pretty cool engineering on their part. I mean, I, I was impressed. That may require another disassembly to see how that works. I'd love to do that. That's pretty cool. And the R2 unit, man, it's going to speak to you. It's very cool. <laughs> I can't wait. All right, that does it for this week on Projections. We'll be back next week with more VR and AR talk. Until then, Jeremy and I, we'll see you next time.